Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 44. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do this video series on the first of every month so that we can take a step back from what's going on in the day to day, the week to week. You know, we take a step back from looking at all the little things we look at on a more daily basis and just say, all right, where is the asset class right now? Is it undervalued? Is it overvalued? Is it fairly valued? And and that's the purpose of, of the video. And, and I know it's called Bitcoin, but it's actually the total market cap. As of March 1st, 2024, the total market cap of the entire cryptocurrency asset class is coming in at about $2.276 trillion with a fair value being about 2.378 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 4.3%. Now, Bitcoin has been undervalued, or sorry, total market cap has been in undervaluation territory, essentially, if you exclude popping above it here in August 2022, since June of 2022. So we, we're going on almost two years of being in that undervaluation phase. And now that the question sort of raises is, is that out of the ordinary? It's not. You know, historically, we can spend years in undervaluation territory. In fact, one of the prior market cycles that a lot of people like to compare this one to, even though I do think there are some distinct differences, but is the 2015-2016 cycle. And in that case, you can see that it went undervalued in January 2015 and did not go to any type of overvaluation until two and a half years later almost. About 20, what, so 20, 28 months or so. Um, so almost almost two and a half years before it actually went into overvaluation territory. And if you look at the cycle before that, you can see that we, we did poke our head into overvaluation territory a little bit, but we didn't durably go there until the post having year. So in last cycle, we durably went overvalued in Q4 of the halving year. The cycle before that, we durably went overvalued in Q2 of the post halving year. And the cycle before that, we went durably overvalued in Q1 of the post halving year. So in all three prior cases, entering sort of a durable overvaluation phase occurred sometime between Q4 of the halving year to Q2 of the post having year. That's at least what we have historically seen, right? And the, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because we are approaching that overvaluation territory, right? I mean, we're only 4% below the fair value logger than the congression trend line. Now, again, there was a period in 2019 where we went overvalued for a while. But what I mean by durable overvaluation really is where you're spending like, you know, a year, right? I mean, we went over by here in November 2020. We didn't go back down below it until June 2022, right? I mean, that was well over a year of being overvalued. So when I say durable overvaluation, I'm talking about these phases, right? May 2017 until December 2018, right? Well, you're in overvaluation territory for like the better part of one to two years, not just a few months like it was over here. This was like April to, to September, right? So really not even half a year of overvaluation territory back in 2019. So when we think about durable overvaluation, it means really aggressively going into that upper overvaluation range and staying there for a longer period of time. Now, what's fascinating is that when Bitcoin, sorry, when the total market cap fell below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, the fair value was at about 1 trillion. And then when we went back up to it, the fair value was about 1.13 trillion. The fair value today is about twice that at around 2. Point, you know, 2.4 trillion almost. Um, and the reason why the fair value goes up is that it's a monotonically increasing function is because we assume that adoption is happening within the cryptocurrency asset class. Now that assumption is not really baked into the model. The model is just taking into account the data. It doesn't concern itself with what's going on and, you know, Bitcoin adoption, it just sort of looks at the data and says, well, based on the data, this is the fair value of the asset class. And so again, we can spend a long time being undervalued, or we can spend a long time being overvalued. And what history shows, history shows that during undervaluation territory, what tends to happen is market share goes away 
from altcoins and towards Bitcoin, right? Away from alts and then towards Bitcoin. But as you get into parabolic rallies above the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, that can shift away from Bitcoin and back to, to altcoins. So it's important to remember that. Now, one of the things to note is that a lot of times we will get relatively close to that lower green regression trend line before durably going overvalued. And in fact, it actually happened over here in, in March 2020. You might say, well, that's not really that close. That was not a, That was the daily close. If you look at the lower band, we went down to about 102, um, or the, the lower band was 102 billion. And if you go look at total market cap back then, it, it, you can see that it actually dropped all the way down to around that same level, like the low 100 billion range. So an important consideration to make. Also back over here in August 2015, the lower band was at around 3 billion. And if we go take a look at where total market cap was back then, you can see that it went right around 3 billion, right? Um, and so we've talked about, you know, that general idea in the past of, of, of getting close to that before durably going into overvaluation territory. Again, we're approaching it now, right? We are, we are aggressively approaching it now. We're only 4% or so away from the overvaluation territory. So it will be interesting to see what the reaction is at that level. Because during this whole period, while total market cap is the same as it was back in April of 2022, we know that the, the, the composition of the, of the asset class is completely different, right? I mean, a lot more of that capital is in Bitcoin as opposed to, to altcoins, right? There's been a rotation of that capital from alts to Bitcoin as the relative flight to safety has, has really taken over, right? And so when we think about where we are today, what we can do is we can take the percent difference from the fair value and the, the actual current market cap and see, you know, how far, you know, where are we in terms of overvaluation, undervaluation? And you can see that we are approaching the red line, which represents the fair value. And if we go back and look at history, you can see a, a, a couple of things, right? In this cycle, right in the 2012 cycle, we went overvalued briefly, and then we went overvalued again briefly. And then on the third attempt, we went durably overvalued, right? It was a third attempt. In this cycle, it was the first attempt, right? Once we went into overvaluation territory, we stayed there. And then last cycle, the first attempt didn't really wasn't really durable. It only lasted a few months. The second attempt wasn't durable either. The third attempt kind of got us there. And then the fourth attempt, we really blasted through. So that just kind of shows you, you know, where we were each time when we went durably overvalued. And again, this one here was post having year. This was post having year. This was Q4 of the having year. Right now, we're in Q1 of the having year. So what it shows you is kind of where we are, right? We talked about how, you know, we are pretty heated right now. I don't think anyone would deny that. The, the asset class is somewhat heated. Everyone's watching the price, um, you know, on an hourly basis, it seems, right? So we are somewhat heated um, for sure. And, and I think that is best represented by the idea that normal durable overvaluation territory doesn't occur until late having year or early post-having year, and we are now approaching that territory, and we're only in Q1 of the having year, right? So um, that is, you know, at least something to to keep in mind. And so, you know, if there is if there is a cool off phase, let's say sometime, you know, after the having or something for a little bit, that would be relatively normal, right? We we saw that over here um, in 2012. Um, we saw it over here in 2016, right? And we also saw it, um, you know, being undervalued well into the having year of 2020. So that wouldn't be out of the ordinary if something like that were to happen. Um, but in the meantime, you know, it's just important to always take a step back and say, where are we, generally speaking, in terms of the entire market cycle? And technically, we are still below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. Now, I've been an advocate of a Bitcoin heavy portfolio during undervaluation territory, especially during QT and higher rates because capital should leave alts and go to Bitcoin. And I'd like to think that that's what's largely happened, right? I'd like to think that's what's largely happened. Um, 
And that phase, I think, will continue for longer, you know, for, for longer, you know, that capital sort of eventually making its way to Bitcoin slowly but surely, and that continuing to provide Bitcoin um, with that liquidity that it needs. So interesting way to look at the market, I think, just to take a step back, see what is the fair value? What is the current market cap? How undervalued or overvalued are we? Are we? And also understanding that we can stay undervalued for a long period of time. And in terms of how long we were undervalued before we went durably overvalued, if we just kind of exclude the 2019 phase, uh, which maybe we shouldn't exclude it, but just to sort of phrase it as how long did it take once we went undervalued to reach a phase where we went to overvaluation territory that lasted for at least a year. Here, it was from November of 2018 until November of 2020. So it was two years, approximately. Here, it was January 2015 until May of 2017, so just over two years. And then over here, it was you know, October 2011 to February 2013, so just over a year. Right now, we were June 2022 until March 2024, right? So this coming June will be two years. Um, last couple of cycles, it was about two to two and a half years. Okay, and, and the two-year mark will be reached um, about three months from now. So not, not that far off. Um, the two and a half year mark, of course, would be reached if it if it were to play out like this cycle over here, which I know a lot of people have compared to, it would, you know, it, it would essentially mean two and a half years from uh, from from where we dropped below. And that would basically put us all the way out at the end of the year, right? At the end of 2024. So uh, just a different way to think about the market. Hopefully you guys find this, uh, you know, these this series useful to kind of keep you focused on the long-term trend of the asset class, how the asset class, how the composition of the asset class changes over time, and how, you know, in undervaluation territory, Bitcoin-heavy portfolios tend to do better. Um, and then once you get really durably overvalued, after that Bitcoin parabolic rally is over, that's when altcoins tend to outperform for a while. So just something to, to remember, the overvaluation phase, the undervaluation phase, it's pretty normal. Unfortunately, we can't just stay on the fair value. That would obviously be a lot, a lot more simpler. But the way the markets work, we go undervalued, we go overvalued, and we just sort of you know, ebb and flow, right? From extreme fear to extreme greed and back and forth and back and forth. I've also said before, right, that ultimately my goal for the asset class is to reach approximately a $10 trillion market capitalization, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder What's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Also, note that we have a free tier on the website, and the free tier actually includes this chart, right? So make sure you guys check that out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.